So the verse that we have for 2023 is Numbers chapter six. And uh, it's, it's a famous verse. It's a benediction uh, that's given over Israel. And, uh, and I'm sure, you know, in your normal life, the book of Numbers is probably not the book you tend to go to every day and be like, this is my favorite book in the Bible. It's filled with a whole bunch of numbers, uh, which is kind of the point of the name. And it's like this collection of these things that Israel has done through its history and how many people were there and how many tr groups and all the rest of it. So uh, tends to not be maybe your favorite book in the Bible, but it has this, some great stories in it, some great summations of things that have happened through the Exodus and what God has done. But the reason we're using it as our, our verse of the year in 2023 as a church is because it, one of the most famous passages in the book, and it was probably the most famous, and become a song that most of us know. Um, and I, I remember uh, my first day of going to Bible college. I had stress and anxiety. I didn't even know if I was gonna do this with my life. I had already been in school uh, for some film stuff and some different things I wanted to do. And then I arrived at, at, through this series of events that I won't bore you with, tell you another time. Uh, God had just spoken through all these different people to tell me I'm supposed to go into ministry. So I arrived uh, the first day at Bible college and I'm totally freaked out. I don't know what's happening. And the first class I walk into, is this course about spiritual formation in our life. And at the end of it, this, this teacher, he was this pastor, he's an awesome guy, like six foot three, just a presence of a guy. He goes, at the end of the class, he, he said, I want you all to stand up. And so we all stood up and he would end every class. I didn't realize this, but this was my first class, totally freaking out. And he would say this benediction over us. And he would say it, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And in that moment when he did that, man, my whole world just went, it just settled. And that's what this verse does. In a, in a world of challenge and anxiety and, and, and just fear and all kinds of things that we deal with in our life, even things that we're excited about, what do we need the most? Well, what number six is saying is I want you to go tell Israel in their time of wondering what's next that these are the things I'm going to say. I'm going to bless them. I'm going to keep them. I'm going to shine my face on them. I'm going to be gracious to them. I want them. I'm going to lift up my countenance upon them and give them peace. Notice it's all God's going to do stuff. And what we tend to focus on is like, what can we do for God? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? We got to stop before we get that because that's downstream. First, just let's just realize God's doing a thing. God is the main actor in this story. He's moving, he's blessing. He's doing amazing things in your life. And then your, your job is to react to that. And so there's three basic things he says. He says, I'm gonna bless you and keep you. That's preservation. I'm gonna make my face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. That's enlightenment. And thirdly, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. That's peace. Now, some scholars talk about the kind of Trinitarian idea here, right? Like Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You know how they talk about the Father plans salvation, the Son accomplishes salvation, and the Spirit applies salvation. Well, in this text, you get almost this thing. The Father is the one preserving. You could say the Son is the one that brings enlightenment. Like he's the one who shows up, John 1 says, and he, he exegetes God to the world. He explains who God is to the world. And then the Spirit brings peace. These are the things. Of course, this, this, even this idea of like the, the face of God, right? Like look at that. Um, I will shine my face on you, that big idea. Like in, in verse 25, the Lord make his face shine upon you. Like, to see God's face in the Bible was a really big deal. Remember when, when Moses in Exodus was like, I want to see your face. And God's like, no, 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 you can't see my face and live. And so we saw the back of his head. And then Moses comes down the mountain and he's shining like he's, you know, the people are like, whoa. And in the Hebrew, it actually says that he, his face looked like it had horns almost. Like it's almost like he had a halo of like a huge suntan. He was, he was brighter than everybody else. And everyone was, was scared. Like that's the idea here. It's that God's face is shining. You can't, nobody can see. Of course, that's the idea. Nobody can, is allowed to look at God, you know, it's everything. So in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart, right? Matthew chapter five, for they will see God. Think about that. This theme of like, I'm gonna shine my face on you. You're gonna see 
God face to face one day, right? C.S. Lewis says, it's safe to tell the pure in heart that they shall see God for only the pure in heart want to. It's like, do you have a passion that God's face would shine on you? Did you realize that this was actually a theme all throughout the whole scriptures, that the face of God, that one day you'll see him face to face. This is the great promise of the Bible. The point of this is that, that these three things, bless you and keep you. So God wants to preserve you in 2023, right? This is the idea that, that the things that really matter, the things that are eternal, not just the temporal things, some of that as well, but the eternal things he's going to preserve in you. He wants to bless you and preserve you. This is something he does. And then, and then his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Sometimes we think of God as like this figure who's angry and mad and he's just out to get you. Like if things are going really well in your life, you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Do you feel like that sometimes? The anxiety, the, things are going too well, I'm just waiting. When's that thing gonna happen that's gonna derail my whole life? And God's going, man, I wanna just flip the script a little bit in your brain. I'm gonna be gracious to you. I'm gonna shine my face on you. And of course, as I said, that's most beautifully seen in Jesus. And then <clears throat> the Lord lift up his countenance, again, this face image upon you and give you peace. I wanna give you peace. I want you to have a year of peace, he says. And there's just, there's just something in this about the presence of God that I think that comes through that in 2023, we could all just go after a little harder. The countenance, the face, these are the themes that are going to result in peace. There's just something about uh, I, my grandfather right now, he's a hundred and he is, uh, he is in, he's kind of declining. He's they're just keeping him comfortable at this point. I don't know when he's going to pass, but you know, I'm kind of sitting there. I got my plane ticket out and I'm like, this was a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, you know what? I should go visit him. Uh, and so I, I worked it all out and I got it, you know, right on the plane, I was stepping onto the plane and then I just realized I had so much work to do and so much stuff with the family and I'd been away. And so I just got this kind of check in my spirit that, you know, don't go right now because you're going to have to go up to Toronto and kind of be with the family when he passes away. And, and him and I are good. Like we talk and he loves Jesus. I know where he's going. He knows I know that we're all good. So actually ended up coming back. But but what made me even just go to all the work, get that plane ticket, get to the airport, almost step on the plane, then realize, oh, not what happened? Because there's something about face-to-face, -face, right? There's something about, I wanna, I wanna kind of be there. So I FaceTimed him, you know, and we just sit on the, it's, it's better than just talking on the phone. There's something about the face, right? And, and the beautiful theme of this is God is putting his countenance on us and he's shining his face on us. So here's the big idea. In order to get that peace, in order to get that graciousness, in order to get that enlightenment in 2023, let's run after the, the face of God. Let's run after the presence of God. Maybe some of you, you just need to switch some habits in your life that you need to prioritize. Maybe I'm gonna get up in the morning and I'm gonna read a chapter of the Bible every day, right? Get up half an hour earlier than you did in 2022. Get your coffee or whatever you drink and sit in a chair, you have a sacred chair, man. Whatever it is, these habits need to change. You can change certain habits in your life and in, what do they say, three weeks? If you do it, you, you start to rewire your brain and then you start to actually rewire your desires. The things that you might not have liked before, things that might have seemed boring to you, you actually start to like. God not only changes what you do, he changes what you want to do. So let's pursue him. It might be fasting, more worship music in your life. Um, whatever the discipline is, choose one or two or three things that you're gonna shift and change for 2023 so that we can go after the face and the presence of God so we can see life change among us. Thanks guys, hopefully this is helpful to you. God bless you as we start this amazing year ahead.